Welcome to the DFS Build NBA Edition. Taylor and I are going to break down the four-game DraftKings slate for Thursday. No NFL video today, and obviously, your boy is sick. <laughs> My voice is not great. I've been out the past couple of days, so unfortunately, we could not get to the Tuesday slate, and we also will not be pushing out a Thursday night football uh, video this week. But hopefully, we can get back on track, and that starts tonight. Uh, Taylor, we got a four-game slate. Uh, quite a bit different than yesterday's 10-gamer. Um, and this one is loaded with studs. So I, I it's going to be interesting as to how to attack it, but obviously we're going to want somebody up top. Uh, and right away, let's start going position by position here. Luka Doncic starts off that conversation with, I believe, the highest, um, yeah, the highest projection of the entire slate, certainly the highest of all point guards. So what are you feeling about Luka and what other point guards uh, stand out? Yeah, I mean... Obviously, he's great. They're playing San Antonio, not a good defensive team. Uh, I think he led the league or ranked second, maybe, to Embiid in usage last year. So, no qualms with it. He's 11 1, so you're paying a premium for him. Um, the position as a whole is okay. It's not the deepest point guard slate. I guess it's a four gamer, pretty small, but I feel like Luca might come in fairly low owned on this slate, which naturally makes him pretty interesting. I think his teammate Kyrie Irving uh, on DK is only 7,500, which I think is going to lead to him being quite popular. Um, I get it. Obviously, that's too cheap. That's pretty much cheaper, probably cheaper than he was all year last year. But I don't think I really want to play him into ownership. Like I'd rather pivot that to Luca or just find someone else to play a point guard. Yeah, Jamal Murray is a pivot in the same price range. He's still carrying some ownership, but that is one way to do it. Uh, obviously, Luka coming at 17% ownership compared to Kyrie's 26. Who knows if that will stick? It's only 146 central, but yeah, I agree with you. Um, worth noting, SGA is 1.2K cheaper than Luka and does not project that poorly compared to him uh, coming out with 49 point fancy projection, whereas Luka is at 57. So obviously, SGA is not Luka but you're saving a little bit of money and getting a guy who can get um, to where Luca goes. One guy I really like, or I liked before I really started looking at the slate anyways, just because there's so many studs worth getting to, is De'Aaron Fox. He feels a little bit cheap at 8.5K. So he's coming in completely overlooked and unowned. I think he is a really good pivot away from Kyrie Irving. Obviously, you're paying a 1000 you know, extra bucks, but um, I th- it, feels like, it feels like his projection is a little bit low. Uh, the matchup with Minnesota obviously is not ideal, but I just think he stands out as uh, a guy who's a little bit too cheap on this slate. And every, if everybody's flocking towards Kyrie, that's an auto fade for me. Obviously, he is cheap. He does have a huge role, but worth noting, Clay Thompson is now there, so maybe that cuts into Kyrie a little bit. Like, nobody that is there is going to cut into Luka, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, as we go down here, I think the top guys kind of explain their, you know, themselves away. If you want to go pay for Chalky Kyrie, that's fine. I think Luca is the play for me at point guard on this slate up top. Uh, and then if I was going to go down, it'd be De'Aaron. As far as value goes, I was talking about this before off offline, so to speak. Russell Westbrook at 5K flat. We don't really know what his role is going to be yet with Denver, but I mean, the value is not amazing on this slate. So Russ at 5K might be one of my favorite values overall and certainly one of my favorite values at point guard. Yeah, it's hard to get away from him. <clears throat> Uh, it feels pretty gross playing a backup point guard, but at least it's Russ. We know his long history of being quite dominant for a minute. Uh, not that guy anymore necessarily, but even last year with the Clippers, he was still over one fantasy point per minute. Um, 5K is just cheap. There's not a lot of value on this slate. I think he's going to be popular, but it's kind of hard, like I was saying, to get away from him. So I don't hate it. Um there really is nothing else cheap like Mike Conley. I guess if Mike Conley is going to be, you know, significantly under owned compared to Westbrook at the same price, uh, I don't mind that. Uh, Conley is a starter at least. Minutes should be a bit more secure, I would think. But even he, like, he's an old man. He's not going to play a ton, but straight line pivot, I think that's the one you're looking at. Um, there is a guy you can fully punt with. It is Bub Carrington at 3K flat. A uh, rookie playing for the Wizards, first-round rookie. uh, Looked decent enough in the preseason. The Wizards are huge underdogs here. I think they're 14-point underdogs at home against Boston. 
Uh, if you want to play the blowout angle, I don't think that's the worst thing to do on such a tiny slate, especially one like this that lacks punt uh, value. So not for the faint of heart. I would not do this in single entry or anything like that. Certainly not cash if you're doing that. But if you're entering multiple lineups in a large field tournament, I think Carrington is someone that should be at least on your radar a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you want to play for the blowout, I think any of those bench wizards are viable. I think, I mean, the blowout risk is pretty real here i mean it is boston and the wizards are not good so i don't mind it um like you said not safe but it is in play one other guy i'll mention for value at point guard would be peyton pritchard i mean obviously if the blowout thing is going to happen at 4.3k he looks really good he's going to carry some ownership but uh his price has come down from opening night and the matchup is great and he should get extra minutes off the bench all right moving to shooting guard up top is anthony edwards who we really liked on opening night and he did i think he did well enough i can't remember exactly how he did um, but not as well as Jason Tatum, I can tell you that much. Um, and then behind him at shooting guard is Kyrie Irving. They are the two best projecting shooting guards. And then not too far behind Irving is Jalen Brown. So those three guys, there are the only shooting guards projecting for over 40 fancy points. So I can totally see why somebody would want to play them. For me, shooting guard is probably going to be a spot where I punt, and that's probably where I'm going to slide in Peyton Pritchard after adding in Luca at point guard. Uh, but there are a decent amount of options here as far as value goes. Alex Caruso at 4.8K, Malik Monk at 5K. Russ is also viable uh, in the sh- shooting guard slot too. So all those guys are in play for me. Uh, anybody else stand up for you? Um, <clears throat> in the same vein, Bilal Koulibaly, uh, another young wizard. I think he should start for them. Um, he was okay per minute last year as a rookie. We'll see how he is this year. The matchup sucks, but... Uh, he's cheap and has a role, 30 minutes, potential for more. I think he's somewhat safe in a blowout. Uh, Julian Strother, 3-2 uh, for the Nuggets, uh, guard forward eligible, so you can play him in pretty much the maximum number of positions. That always comes in handy. Uh, it's going to have a role off the bench. He's not going to project well from a median standpoint, but cheapy playing 20-plus minutes I think is okay. Uh, you can play Bub Carrington here as well. I don't think DiVincenzo is a bad play if Caruso and you know Malik Monk are going to be popular in the 5K range. I don't think it's a huge drop to DiVincenzo. He projects comparably. Um, he's also projecting for some ownership, but not a ton. I think he's fine. And if you want to pay up, there's always Brown. There's always White. Um, I don't think I'm going to pay up for Clay Thompson on purpose unless I'm just looking for a pure pivot. 5'9 just seems like a lot for him. I don't know what kind of role he's going to play. Uh, projected to start for the Mavs, but I don't know. He wasn't very good last year. He's not getting any younger. I'm not dying to do that. Oh, one more I wanted to mention is Kevin Herter, uh, starting for Sacramento 4'5. Um, if Monk is the more popular play off the bench, which I get uh, as a better per minute guy, I think Herter as the starter in similar minutes at lower ownership uh, makes a lot of sense too yeah if it plays out that way right now the ownership is pretty similar so if that's gonna be the case i'd rather just play monk i think he's the better play but i don't have a problem with it whatsoever uh did you mention lou dort i mean just because i'm assuming he's starting is or is he not uh caruso william i assume he's not starting but let's see um yeah if he's not starting i mean he's projected for 31 minutes which is nice they for do 4. have him projected to start so i guess you can do that okay so if he starts 31 minutes for 4.5k i'm okay with that as well moving on to small forward up top we have jason tatum who wrecked for like 66 fancy points on opening night i don't think that's going to happen again here because i'm assuming it's gonna be a blow up but the wizards are an amazing matchup Last and he remains a blowout too as you recall that's true that's true so he could smash again, whatever. He is cheap. I mean, I, I don't want to say Tatum's a bad play, but if he's going to be chalky at 34%, I'm just going to hope that he doesn't do a lot of the heavy lifting and that the game blows out and they'll go somewhere else. But he's not a bad play. He's, he's, he is a good price, and we know what he's capable of. Um, as far as other options at small forward, uh, let's see. Let me look for this. Yeah, Jalen Brown is way behind him, 13 fancy points behind him in terms of projection. And then, I mean, Jalen Williams looks pretty good at 6.9K. Um, unknown what DeMar DeRozan's role is in Sacramento, but at 7.8K, in theory, that's an okay price. Um, I think like Monk and Caruso are guys I'd be going to here because I, I don't know. I mean, on a four-game slate, I kind of want to go get two of those really reliable studs on this slate and then just kind of go – you know, right down the middle with a lot of these other guys who I think are capable of getting like 25 to 30 fancy points and then I'll be okay. Um, 
But yeah, so I'm not super interested in paying up here. I'm probably interested in sticking right around the guys we've already discussed. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> trying to pull my tab back up. So you can play Caruso here. You can play Monk here. You can play Strother here. Um, you can play Koulibaly here. So it's a lot of the same names. I think Tatum is going to be pretty popular again. Uh, a little more expensive, but he looked phenomenal the other night. This matchup is significantly better, even on the road. Um, Jalen Williams is going to be really popular too, I think, 6'9". He got a big usage boost last year, like up to 29% in the minutes he played without Josh Giddy. Uh, Giddy obviously completely gone now. They replaced him with Caruso, not a high usage player, not a player who will have the ball in his hands. So in theory, J-Dub is going to step into a bigger role as far as scoring goes. I think he's a great play. I'm just worried he's going to be really popular. Um, but I don't mind it. I mean, everyone's somewhat popular, I think, on a four-game slate. Um, Harrison Barnes, don't really want to do that ever, even though he's on a new team now. I still expect him to play around 30 empty minutes. Uh, Julian Champagny is another kind of decent punt at small forward for 3-8, projected to start for San Antonio. And that's really it. Like this position beyond the guys we've already talked about, shooting <clears throat> guard looks pretty rough. Uh, not sure if you mentioned Kaishan George for the Wizards. Again, if you want to kind of go into the whole punt thing with the Wizards, he's 3K flat, so he's there. Uh, I'm going to double down with you on Jalen Williams. If I end up paying up, that is the guy I want to get. He's way too cheap at 6.9K. He's one of the better plays of the slate. He is carrying ownership almost 30%. For good reason. It's just I'm probably going to go two studs here on this four-game slate and then kind of just, you know, I'm just not going to have the funds to get him probably if I'm doing a, a single build. Um, but he's Another a really good player. to mention is uh, MPJ. He's under 6K. Sure. Denver gets thinner every year. They lost Bruce Brown last year. They have lost KCP this year. Um, his use, he's like Aaron Gordon. He's basically the same guy. They both tend to hover around, uh, you know, 30 fantasy point projections, but for five, eight, I think he can do a lot worse and it doesn't look like he's going to be all that chalky. So I think he's decent enough with both forward spot, uh, eligibility. I don't have a problem with him at all. It's just not like a priority. He's, yeah, he's coming in, not even over the 29 point fantasy projection. I think if you're stuck between him and Clay Thompson, I prefer MPJ, but I, I'm not yeah. racing to get either of them, but uh, the, the prices are totally fine. Moving on to power forward, obviously Tatum is still there up top, but then you also have Sabonis, who weirdly projects below him. Sabonis is a light projection. I guess facing the Timberwolves uh, and the defense that was ranked number one overall last year is a problem. Um, I don't know, but that feels light. His price feels light. Sabonis looks like one of the better plays on the board. Matchup be damned. Yep. Um, then you have like Chet. I don't know. Chet like always sounds good, but then like it's just the ceiling is never really there. Uh, Julius Randle again. We talked about him on opening night. We didn't really know what to expect, and I think the price is okay, but I'm just not ready to go there. So yeah, none of these guys up top. Like if you want to go get Tatum, fine, but I would much rather just play Sabonis at two hundred dollars more and just hope that you know Tatum busts and you just have a completely unowned Sabonis at nine point five k. Fucking love Sabonis on this yeah. slate. I think it is such a good spot. Like. The uh, Timberwolves got completely murdered by the Lakers in the paint the other night. Uh, AD feasted against them. Not that Sabonis is AD, but he stuffs the stat sheet. He's an elite for a minute guy. His ownership is just insanely low. This guy was over 10K routinely last year. Right. He's 9,500 tonight. And you can play him at power forward, which I don't really think was the case a lot last year. That like never really makes him, yeah, that puts him squarely in play and makes him a lot easier to get to. Yep. I don't know if this ownership is accurate, but if it is, like, I do not understand. Like, he's flying completely under the radar, and I think. He well, might be I, I actually, bu I, bu well, I don't know if he's gonna be two percent owned, which is what we're seeing right now. But <laughs> I buy him being sub ten percent for sure because you have Jokic, you have Luca, you have Tatum, yeah. and then you have, even have guys that are like. Wimby. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, Wemby, and then you even have guy in SGA. Like, you have so many good studs to pay up for. Like, if you're gonna go spend money, those are the guys you kind of really want, but. At some point in GPPs, you got to think like, okay, those guys are great. I want those guys, but Sabonis is under 10K and nobody's going to be on him. Like that's where you can get an edge. So then you could hope Sabonis goes crazy and gets you 70 and then Joker just gets like 55 or Luca gets like 55 or 60, you know, and you just have some kind of a minor edge there up top. So I'm with you. Obviously, um, love him a lot. Um, 
as far as value at power forward, old Horphy, 5.2K, I think he's in play. That's okay. I'm not I'm not like making him a priority, but I think he's fine. Keegan Murray is probably my favorite my favorite one uh, in that price range at 5.5K. Uh, Jeremy Sohan's interesting at 4.6K. A lot of guys that are just like kind of risky. Nas Reed, PJ Washington. Um, I think they're all really good plays, but it's just, I think Nas Reed actually might be my favorite one of that grouping, but they all carry a little bit of risk. Um, but Nas Reed and Keegan Murray are probably the most compelling to me at power forward. I really like uh, Nas Reed. I like PJ Washington a lot. Mm-hmm. Sohan, like you said, MPJ play <clears throat> here. I think that's a great play. Even Keegan Murray, uh, another king, pretty affordable at five five. Like if he's going to be significantly lower on than Al Horford, I don't really see why that's something you wouldn't want to do. Um, there's kind of a lot to like here. Julius Randle, I don't mind as a spend, even though he was awful the other night. Uh, DeRozan, Chet Holmgren. There's a lot of power forward, and there's a point guard. Mentioned um, the bad piece, Paul five nine. I don't think is a bad play. Thirty minutes against the Mavs. Um, I think he's okay. I don't think it's someone I'm going to have a ton of, but I forgot to mention him, and I think he's decent enough. The ageless wonder, indeed. All right, let's kick it over to center to close things up here. Obviously, Jokic, Wemby, aforementioned Sabonis. Those are the top three plays at center, and. Jokic and Wemby take the cake. 53 and 56 fantasy points coming in. Jokic is coming in with 20% ownership. Wemby is a bit interesting because he is cheaper than Jokic and Luka, and we know he has a similar ceiling and floor, and he's the lowest owned of that trio. So I have a lot of interest in Wemby uh, right up there with Sabonis. Um, Honestly, like the more I look at this slate, SGA, Wemby, and Sabonis look like three really fun guys to target because they're just as good as anybody else here, basically. Um, and they're not going to be owned. So that's very interesting. As far as like mid-range guys go, I mean, Rudy at 7.2K is viable. He's fine. I just don't see a path to him really personally. Um, and then we can get back to the values. We talked about like 5.1K Nasreed, Horphy. One guy I don't mind a little bit is Daniel Gafford off the bench at 4.5K, hyper-efficient player. Uh, really good per minute guy. He's only going to get like 25 or so minutes. If, if that, I guess uh, you can kind of just pick and choose between him and Derek lively. I just think off the bench, he doesn't have to contend with um, Wemby so much. Uh, so he's a, he's a little bit safer in my opinion. I'm not seeing anybody else that really feels comfortable uh, as far as punts go at center though. Yeah. I like the call with both of the Mavs centers. <laughs> I, I do think I prefer uh Gafford little discount uh, coming off the bench. They're really going to split the minutes, it looks like, once again. So I think both are fine. I think Gafford is the one I slightly prefer. Um, yeah, like you said, Gobert, okay. Valanchunas, like I'm getting a dusting of them, but nothing major. Like it's mostly Sabonis, uh, Gafford, Wimby, Jokic, Nazarene. Um There's a lot to like at center, as there always is. Yeah. So as we wrap things up here, what is your flag plant of the night? It's got to be Sabonis at the ownership. I just think that's egregious, and I feel yeah. like he's someone who can put 70 fantasy points up there, and if he puts up 70 fantasy points at sub-10% ownership, um, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, I'm I'm in full agreement, to be honest. It's, it's just like anytime you get a slate where everybody is eyeing four other guys and there's one guy who just has a screaming value up top you have to you have to pay some mind to it for sure with that in mind though uh, as far as strategy goes are you looking at a one stud build or you do you feel like because of all the crazy guys on this slate we have to go get two of them because Sabonis is so cheap i am really getting a, a lot of him with luca or a lot of him with Wembenyama, mm-hmm. and just punting with like herder strother <laughs> champagne Westbrook, uh, the Mav Center is Malik Monk. Like the value is not comfortable, but everyone has the same player pool. Um, going with one stud, I feel like it's just kind of selling yourself short. I feel like you have to pay up for two and just kind of hope with the uh, the cheap stuff. Yeah, it's true. I think I think that is also going to be my strategy. Like I was saying earlier, I think two studs is the way to go. I think three studs is stretching yourself a, way too thin on this slate. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, probably a bit too far. Yeah, there's not enough value to really like that idea. And even two studs, it, like the value is not comfortable. But there are enough good, decent values. Like okay, d- 
on a big slate, would we feel super comfortable with getting 20 minutes out of Dan Gafford? Not really, but on a four game slate, I think if, if he can get me 25 fantasy points in 20 minutes, uh, that's a win. I'm okay with that. You know, same with like Herter, uh, Nas Reed, PJ Washington, Russ, like all these guys are right around 5k Peyton Pritchard, 4.3. I don't know for sure if I'm going to do the, with the wizards punts just because playing for a blow, like literally never works for me. But I think they're good. That's good. A I don't good think, call out. Yeah, like that's not something you definitely have to do. Like I'm much more comfortable not playing them. I think it will I prefer, be uh, super annoying if they crush though, like Carrington yeah. and, and uh, Kaishan and all these wizard scrubs just getting like 35 fantasy points off the bench. I think Strother is the one I feel best about. Um, I mean, those are rookies playing the first game against Boston, and you're banking on a blowout. There are a lot of ways that can go horribly wrong. So true. All right, that is going to do it for us. Hopefully this helps you out. If it does, please give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel. My apologies for being sick and not being able to do a Thursday night football video, but good luck in that if you play tonight and also good luck in NBA. Thanks for watching and good luck.